Um, <laughs> that one is there. It is there. Yep. Okay. Um, qualifying expenses include expenses for homeschooling is actually the answer. We really didn't talk about this. Okay. It's kind of a sticky subject. There's a lot of uh, lobbyists and legislation out there because of the popularity of homeschooling that they would like families that do choose to homeschool to be able to take advantage of some of these things that uh, occur for the regular public or private school systems. So, um, uh, expenses include ordinary and necessary, that's true. Up to $250 of qualified expenses paid for during 2015 can be deducted, and that's true. So, if you were like a part-time teacher then, and you were getting the money, Yep, exactly. Yeah, so it, it is for full-time teachers. So, all right. All right. Yep. Qualifying tuition fees include all the following except which expenses listed below. See with room and board. Yep, so nothing can come for room and board, okay? All right. Fred, number four. Student loan interest can be taken as a deduction only if certain rules apply which is not a rule that is necessary for taking the adjustment. D, the taxpayer does not have to be an eligible student. Okay, and what, what situation would that be true for D? What are you thinking about? If somebody has a parent's loan, you know, they may not be a student, and the, you know, it may even be the case that the loan's still in their name and the, the dependent that was the student is no longer on their return that would allow them to still be able to take that interest, okay? Unless they pay it off early, so. All right, number five. In order to claim the moving expenses as an adjustment on the form 1040, line 26, which of the following statements is not correct? C, there are no exceptions to answer A. Okay, that's kind of an odd question. <laughs> Not very well written on that one. All right, number six. Which statement is true concerning the adjustment to income for one half of the self-employment tax? Self-employment tax. Well, C and D are actually false. Because line 27 is the deduction for one half. It's not the actual self-employment tax. Self-employment tax goes on page two of the 1040. Kind of a trick question. So if you take a look at line 27, whoops, 10, 4, 8, 1. that's the deductible part of the self-employment tax. So yeah, it's kind of a, if it were on an exam, I would say, I'd probably give it to you because uh, what they're looking for is the fact that B, one half of self-employment tax is an adjustment for the taxpayer who is self-employed, okay? So 27 is actually the deductible part of the self-employment tax. The actual tax itself per se is on page two of the 1040 worth the taxes. So it, yeah, it's kind of a trick question. Not very well written one, so. All right, uh, Val, number seven. Penalty on early withdrawal from the savings account would be found on which form that the taxpayer provides? C, 1099, int, Interest and uh, 1099-01-B. That's correct. Yep, because that's that little box that's there, usually box two. Okay. All right. And back up front, number eight. Exactly. Okay. Choose the type of IRA that is not an adjustment to income on form 1040. 
And that's correct. We just have to record it for our due diligence to, you know, because they want to know if you're contributing to it, but it doesn't create like a traditional IRA where it would make an adjustment to income. Okay. 10? A taxpayer may not make a contribution to an IRA if he or she has reached the age of 70 and a half. Exactly. Okay. Everybody remembers that. Once you're into your RMD, you can't take it. They make you take it out, but you can't put it back in. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, using the charts in Pub 17, page 123, to determine if the IRA deduction is a full deduction, partial deduction, no deduction. Okay. Um, This would it say for a IRA deduction? Doesn't say if they're Roths or do they? Okay. Okay. So line one is covered, single, modified AGI six to three thousand. That would be a partial. Okay. Uh, not covered, married filing joint, spouse not covered, 120,000, that would be full, okay? Um, and they realize, we're, we understand what's saying covered, non-covered, right? By the people that are recovered, or covered by the retirement plan. Uh, covered, married filing separate, modified AGI 10,655, um, that would be a full deduction because they're each kind of considered single. Not covered, had a household, 35,000 for the AGI. Uh, that would be a full deduction. Covered, married filing separate, living together, 9,000. That would be a partial. And not covered, married filing joint, spouses covered, 96,000, that would be full, okay? Just remember, and I brought it up here on the little screen, that up in the top of your little worksheet in your uh, TaxWise, there is a whole thing that uh, kind of summarizes what we just went through, okay? because this is up in the section at the top for traditional IRAs, and it talks about um, filing status. So, you know, this is where we were, you know, one is single, uh, four is uh, head of household, two is married filing joint, married filing single, and covered by retirement plan, if they are. Um, you know, that's where the income limitations come in that they were kind of talking about there, okay? Does everybody kind of understand the way the table works on there? Okay. All right. And my answer key was wrong on the 70 and a half one. It said 65, so I don't know who made up the answer key. But they're giving somebody the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Uh, we did some problems in the book. We did, uh, let's see, we did 10, what did we do? We did. 10-2 in class. Any questions about any of the problems? We had Shirley Ray. We had any questions on the Shirley's one? I don't know if I ate too much for dear. But if she's not itemizing, then where do we put the business expenses? Well, she received, if you think about it, she received uh, 1099 miscellaneous. All right, on page 115. Right. So that would go on a schedule C or CEZ. Right. Okay. And then those expenses could go against that. So on a So it looks like those, well, let's see here. Does she have a W-2 for quick workout? She uh, that's it. 
uh, a Gloria Students Workout Facility. I think what they're trying to say there I think what they're trying to say there is the business related expenses and the mileage. I think they're probably looking for you to put that on a schedule CEZ with her 1099 miscellaneous. It's not phrased very well. It, they should have said that those two bullet points were for her um, so she didn't have any mortgage interest or anything else, did she? No. Okay. Yeah, that those would have gone on the CEZ. Um, we could have just put those, you know, because she. Excuse me. Because then you could have just put her 1099 miscellaneous there. Okay. Uh, down here, you could have done her miles and then just her other expenses there. Okay. So I think those bullet points were supposed to go with the. Uh, the miscellaneous income, not her W-2 income, okay? I should have put a little thing in there that said um, with her side job, and I think that's why those bullets are right after that, okay? And everybody did all right with the uh, tuition? There was a, wasn't there student loan interest in this one? Yep, okay. And it was 3,000, but what did she get to deduct? We have 2,500. Even if you put the 3,000 in there, it should calculate you back to 2,500. Okay. All right. Any questions on 10-3 with uh, the day, Sarah Day? Okay. That one's always hidden. Okay. Remember that the renter's credit doesn't show up per se as a, a line, but what it is, is the property tax credit, okay? It's called a renter's credit, so it's kind of deceptive, but really what you're doing as a renter, you're getting a credit because your rent helps pay your landlord's property tax, is the way to think about it. So that's where you go to property tax. So it goes on line 67 on the uh, IT201, the New York IT201, okay? okay? So yeah, it's it's kind of, you know, when you're looking for or you try to hunt down renter's credit, that's kind of the slang word for it. I think it's even, yes, it's even in parentheses there, okay? But like I said, you're getting a credit because you're paying the, helping pay the property tax of your land for your landlord. So they're giving you a credit too, okay? Did we all get, I got 51 bucks, is that? Yeah. Is that right? For, uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's usually pretty small. It's usually pretty small. It's not a real big credit, but it's something. You know, especially when you're talking about income. What did she have on her W-2 there? You know, she's making 13000 Cashed in some savings bonds. So, typical poor college student, right? Her single mom going back to school. Okay. And then the Partridge family. Uh, any questions on the Partridge family? We had some brokers in there. Or bro brokers. We had some brokerage funds in there. That was the big one on that one. And like the, the child's birthday was around, so I just made him a 20 grand And then on the tax withheld on page 128, it didn't, um, it didn't work out right. I don't know if you're supposed to track that or just, I let it go. Tax to withheld on which one? The computer calculated for me because the book is wrong and I didn't change it. I was going to override it because I thought it was part of the problem. Oh, so security tax? Yeah, it doesn't work out. It should be 1388. And 49 cents. Okay. Else mm -hmm. yep. so I, I just, just, just let it override. Yeah. yeah. Unless you have. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Nope, nope. No, no credit for excess Social Security on that one. Mm -hmm. um, Social Security, it should be, um, my computer went to 4712 It didn't round down, it rounded up the dollar. I okay, that's fine. I didn't know if that mattered to anybody if you had, like, instead of the 4711, if mine just went to 4712 and I left it. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Uh, and everybody was comfortable with the out-of-pocket expenses that he had for his company trip. Uh, David went to Colorado for a conference and he incurred some out-of-pocket expenses. He kept a written record of all of his expenses. David's company paid for his hotel. He was not reimbursed for the expenses listed below. Uh, can he deduct laundry? Yes. Long distance phone calls? Professional publications, I don't know where he's parking at, but tolls and parking, okay. He must be parking in Boston. I live there. That sounds about right for a day. Uh, on him reimbursed uh, mileage driven for the year. And during the year when David meets with customers, he often entails, it often entails lunch and is usually will pick up the tab. Meals and entertainment expenses were about 2800 for the year. At Christmas, he sent 10 of his best customers fruit baskets that cost him 35 apiece. So what did we do with those? I didn't know if we should give them to him at $25 apiece. Yep, give them to him at 25 apiece. Yep, yep. You can just put that, uh, well, it depends on how you did the um, business expenses. Since he's got some mileage in there, you could probably have done the 2106 since he's a W-2 employee. He's a W-2 employee, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so you could put that on the 2106 and you probably, uh, let me get back to one here. So on our Schedule A, under business expenses, on this one, I probably, well, you could have probably done an easy, well, you can, that's fine. But with the mileage in there, you know, you can use the 2106, okay? for the business expenses. So they're on Schedule A in that box of line 21. You could, you can do it either way. Um, like I said, because there's mileage and there was no reimbursement, if I remember from what we read. Yeah, there's no reimbursement on it. So you're probably better off using the 2106 or 2106EZ. No, not on the 2106. Yep, yep. Yep. If we have a 1099 miscellaneous, we want to be on a Schedule C. Okay. But because anytime there's mileage involved, it's probably best to use the 2106, whether it's the easy or the regular one. And then somebody had a question about the food. Right. Well, I thought entertainment, I thought wasn't <laughs> allowable. And then meals, I thought was only half. This. <laughs> For well, entertainment's okay as long as you're not taking them out on a fishing boat or a golf course, I guess. But uh, I think what they wanted to do is make sure you realize that he picked up the tab for twenty eight hundred, and then what did you say that he gets to deduct? Just the other person's Basically, half of it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. No, that's fine, as long as you don't double dip on anything. Okay. What you can do on that 2106, yeah, if, yeah, what you, no, no, 
where it says business expenses not included in one through three, where it talks about all the, the travel. If you want to, if you go into that line there, you know, you probably could take and do, do a scratch pad there. It'll act similar to what you did online, you know, that under that other part of line 21, where I've kind of taught you to use that one when you don't have mileage. You could probably do the same thing there so that you could list things out to make sure you didn't miss anything. Because that would be a good supporting thing. And then the meal and entertainment. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the 50% is what they were looking for you to do there. Okay. 1400 mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then the, you know, the 10 at $25 for his fruit baskets. Okay. Yeah. Must be expensive to park in Colorado. I thought it was a pretty big state. There'd be plenty of room to park. How many have ever been to the airport in Denver? Flown through it. I tell you what, don't you feel like you land in Kansas and then you taxi to Colorado? And then you see these little TP things? My parents used to live out there. We flew out there the first time it, well, it had been open about a year. And we landed and we're taxiing and we're taxiing and taxiing. And it just seemed like forever. And, and when you're looking out the window, there is nothing out there. It's just prairie. So, so. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's just nothing, but you do, you feel like you landed, you, you know, landed in Kansas and drove the rest of the way. All right. Okay. All right. So let's head to chapter nine. Okay. And chapter nine, we're going to talk about rents and royalties. All right. Um, so we're kind of getting off our adjustments to income and all the credits and everything that we've done. Um, so now we're back to uh, some things that have to do with our income. All right. So what we're going to be on is, is we're going to be back on page one of the 1040, back up in our rental or excuse me, our income section. Okay. So what we're going to cover is these two lines right here over the next couple classes. Business income, we're gonna go more in depth on the Schedule C. And then we're gonna do line 17, where it says rental, real estate, royalties, partnerships, S-Corps, trust, and then it's size enough to even say, et cetera. So that must mean there's more besides that, they just couldn't fit it on the line, okay? The big one that you're gonna see is going to be rentals, okay? So that's what we'll spend most of our time on. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about royalties. Um, I do have a couple clients that have written books that get their royalties um, and things like that. Uh, they've, I got one that's a teacher that's written some uh, children's books, okay? Um, and so we'll talk about royalties and what income we do with those, okay? Um, Uh, let's see here. So it talks about, in this chapter, rental income is received for allowing someone to use or occupy real estate or personal property. Royalty income is generated from payments, often resulting from licensing agreements received for the use of a valuable right. Payments for the use of a trademark, trade name, service, or anything like that. Ro royalty income expenses generated when the taxpayer is a business as a writer, inventor, or artist are reported on Schedule C. Profit or loss from business. Royalty income and expenses from investing activities such as oil, gas, or mineral properties, copyrights, and patents are reported on Schedule E. Okay? So, that's where there's one of those little distinguishes because you hear royalties, what's everybody usually think of? Music and writing. Okay? But where does that go? On an E or a C? C. Yep. So, if you're a writer, inventor, or an artist... Okay. Yep. So it's kind of deceptive. You know, that's one of those ones that we'll kind of talk about between the two. All right. Okay. Page nine, four rental income. Uh, there's several publications there. Uh, rental income can be from a variety of sources, personal property service provided to renters, real estate, 
and uh, for profit and not for profit, okay? Um, no, we'll talk about those later. All right. Uh, on page nine, five, it says real estate rental income. All the following is considered gross rental income, collected in rent payments, advance rate, rent, excuse me, any amount received before the period it covers, expenses paid by a tenant in Leo rent, property or services received, uh, payments to cancel a lease, security deposits, lease with option to buy. Um, so those are all things that we're paying to a landlord, basically. So that's that rental income. Down below, it talks about rental expenses. Advertising. If I have an empty rental property, uh, sometimes people forget about auto and travel. I get mileage if I'm running back and forth to Home Depot to take care of my rental properties or driving between them. Or if I'm the one that's responsible as a landlord for doing the shoveling or the mowing or whatever that may be. So when I'm commuting back and forth between my rental properties, I get to keep track of my mileage. All right? What happens if I own a rental property in Florida? But what happens if I travel down there? What's anybody think? Yeah, if you're in a timeshare and you're going down and you're going to spend a week down there on vacation, you say, oh, I'm just down there checking out the the timeshare to make sure it was in good shape and you know what, uh, I, I, you know, I put a new shower curtain up, <laughs> okay? So you can kind of see, you know, you gotta be very careful when you start talking about people that have long distance. You know, if they're going down there to, you know, close on the rental of a property with somebody that's gonna rent as the landlord or something where they're conducting business, you know, I, I'd pursue it. But if it's the case that they're just down there and, you know, they're on vacation in Florida and they're just doing a drive-by and say, oh yeah, it hasn't burned down and then they're on their way, okay? You know, you really haven't had your intent to do the business down there. Uh, talks about the cleaning, maintenance, uh, commissions. Um, some people, again, when you go back to, uh, you know, legal professional, your insurance that you have on it, management fees, you know, paying somebody else to do it. You know, if you have somebody that's overseeing it and, you know, some places in Florida, that's typically the case, especially in a community, they might have somebody that's the broker that says, I'll rent it for you and you just pay me to do it, okay? Uh, mortgage interest, if there's a loan on it. Um, some other interest, if you have like a second mortgage on that. Uh, repairs, we'll talk a little bit about that. Distinguish between what repairs would be and an actual improvement, capital improvement. Okay, supplies, uh, real estate taxes, you get those, utilities, uh, depreciation. Like I said, we're gonna talk a little bit about it, but we'll kind of get into it a little bit later. Because now, for about the next, well, that doesn't do too bad, does it? Okay. But starting on 9.6, about partway down, it says depreciation, okay? How many have had experience with depreciation? Okay, what, what would you say depreciation is if you had to define it? General wear and tear of the asset. Yeah, yep. Yeah. How do we treat it on our tax returns? We treat it as a Yes. Okay. And really what it is is so that you can take advantage, you know, each, each thing that you're going to depreciate has what's called a useful life. And the IRS has determined what they feel a useful life of something is, and then you're allowed to depreciate it over the useful life. Um, basically what it's saying is that they're going to allow you to take little bits of expensing that each year which if you think about is great, especially if you have bought a rental property. Last thing I want to do is take my entire loss or my expense of depreciating it all in one year. Then every year after that, my rental income would be taxable. 
okay? So what it allows you to do is take little pieces and put it against the income over the life of the rental property, all right? On page, Do, 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 do. Nine seven is some, a great little thing that talks about uh, some of the useful life of things. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see there that most rental property furnishings fall under the five year recovery period. Well, just wear and tear. Okay. So if I put in a new stove or refrigerator or re carpet, or I have a furnished one, you know. People that rent, do they tend to take as good a care of things as somebody that has possession of it? Okay, so, you know, you're probably gonna be replacing that quite often and, you know, rental properties turn over a little faster. Somebody's not gonna live there for 25, 30 years, It'd be rare, okay? So you can see that we can take that and try to, you know, expand that useful life over that, okay? Um, At the bottom there, it talks about, and we're going to be using um, just the uh, GDS or general depreciation system. So we'll be pretty much in that first column for the makers, okay? Um, at the bottom, it talks about re residential rental property buildings or structures and structural components such as furnaces, water pipes, and stuff, 27 and a half years. So basically what they're saying is, how many people have had a furnace last them 30 years? No? Okay. Just curious. I've always thought that one was odd, but um, basically what it's saying is that you buy rental property after 27 and a half years, you fully depreciate it. You've been able to take little pieces to put against your rental income over the lifetime of owning that rental property. Now, obviously, if you own it greater than 27 and a half years, after a while, Okay, you're not going to get to depreciate what you bought, but chances are probably what have you done some point during the life of that rental? Repairs, Repairs you've paid it off, you know, you're, there's a lot of different things, you know, people will do capital improvements, put a new roof on, you know, siding, whatever it may be to refurbish so that they can create new depreciation, okay? Now, the one thing about depreciation that people don't realize is with rental property, when you go to sell the rental property, you have to recapture all of the depreciation that you've taken. Okay, remember when I talked about basis and about capital gains? So obviously it's not my primary residence unless I have a duplex that I live in half of it and we'll talk about that. But basically what happens is, I got my basis what I bought it for, okay? And here's what I'm gonna sell it for. Okay, so here's our capital gains. Now granted, I can do things to it to do this to increase the basis because I did capital improvements, new roof and a ceiling. However, all that depreciation I took over 27 and a half years, okay, opens the gap back up. Basically what the IRS is saying, and I've heard Esther say this before, over the lifetime of owning that rental, the IRS has allowed you to have that rental income tax-free. So at the end of your time owning the rental property, time to pay the tax, okay? Because when you've reduced your rental income by depreciation, they basically let you take that rental income free. All right, and a lot of people don't realize at the end when they go to sell it, depending on how long they held on to it, that it can be a pretty big hit, okay? All right. How do we figure that out from the recapture of the depreciation? When we do depreciation, we'll talk about it because there's a worksheet and we'll show you how to do it. Like I said, I'm just gonna touch on depreciation a little bit because I'm gonna try to teach it all at once, okay? Because if we got off on a tangent on depreciation right now, we're probably never getting farther in page nine, seven, okay? <laughs> Okay, so that's basically what we're talking about with depreciation. Now, the one thing, too, when we teach depreciation, if you look on 999, nine, nine, there's a little table at the bottom. And we'll get into the whole convention and stuff like that when we talk about depreciation down the road a little bit. But what you'll have to do is if a client comes to you and they say, well, yeah, I've owned a rental property for the last five years. Have you depreciated it? 
well, nobody told me that, okay? Two bad things. You can maybe do a, uh, an amendment going back, okay? So you can do that at least for three years. But if somebody comes to you and you're doing their taxes and they said, well, we're selling our rental property, did you ever depreciate it? No, nobody ever told me to do that. Well, guess what the IRS says? We're gonna charge you like you should have depreciated it. Okay, so whether you take it or not, the IRS is still gonna say that you should have recaptured it. So it's still gonna take a hit on the basis for you. All right, so a lot of people, that's even a worse answer because now all of a sudden, they didn't get that tax-free money against their rental income over the life of the rental, but they have to act like they did. Yeah, and that's a hard one to break the news to somebody. They say, I gotta do what? So, well, nobody, and I, then they're going, you know, I wish that accountant was still alive that started doing my taxes. How come he never depreciated my, you know, and that's where you have to ask. But to this table, and we'll learn when we go through depreciation, you'll have to learn the longhand way to recalculate in there. And I'll show you on the depreciation sheet how that works, okay? All right. Um, on page 9, 10, there's some uh, special circumstances, okay? Um, it talks about a condominium. Trying to think if we even really have any condominiums. Don't see a lot of them here. Um, you're pretty limited on what you can take for expenses if you think about a condominium because your rent pretty much includes everything, doesn't it? It's pretty much just an extended stay hotel room. Okay, because you don't have a lot of the overhead. Chances are you're just, you know, so you're kind of subletting, if you will, and you don't have, you know, you're probably not owner and for depreciation, things like that, okay? So we'll have to be a little bit careful on those. Uh, property change to rental, if a home or other property is changed to rental use at any time other than the beginning of the tax year, divide the year's expenses, such as, no, no. so basically, I have a house and I decided to put a wall down the middle and make it a duplex. And I did this over the summer in July. You know, basically I've turned it into a half rental. All right, or kids moved out, upper and lower. I made the upper uh, apartment, okay? So we just have to make sure that we, you know, get the, get what is proportional to everything. And a lot of the stuff in the software will have where you can put percentages in. So you'll be able to break it down as far as what percentage each one of them is, okay? Talks about renting part of your property. You know, if you're renting a room or something like that, we just have to make sure that we have that on there as far as the proportion, all right? Renting a room is not renting half of your house, okay? All right? Depending on how much free reign the, the, the renter has, okay? Um, 911 talks about personal use of dwelling unit, including vacation home. Um, there's special rules that apply when you have a vacation home in the amount of time that you rent it. The big thing is, if you look down at the bottom, if a dwelling unit is both rented to others and also used as personal residence, limitations may apply to the rental expenses deducted. A dwelling unit is considered to be used as a personal residence if used for personal purposes during the tax year for more than greater of 14 days or 10% of the total days it was rented to other at fair rental price, okay? Basically, you have to be materially participating in renting it, okay? You can't write off all these expenses on the rental income. Now, one interesting thing about the 14 days, um, up in Rochester, Oak Hill Country Club, the, um, the golf course up there, 
they have big tournaments every few years, don't they? People around that club can rent their homes and the golf professionals will rent them from them for less than 14 days. And it can be pretty sizable amounts. They don't even have to declare that. Okay? Because it's less than 14 days. So. Nope. Yep. So. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, as it says here on, uh, right down on 9.12, it says, used as a home but rented less than 15 days. If a dwelling unit was used as a home and it was rented less than 15 days during the year, its primary function is not considered to be a rental and should not be reported on Schedule E. There is no requirement to report the rental income and rental expenses from this activity. Okay, reason I know this, um, used to be in the golf business, I used to work in Boston when they had a Ryder Cup, and that was one of my jobs is to go around to the neighborhood around it and find homes for all the dignitaries and stuff. And some of these people for less than 14 days were getting $50,000 for their home because of the proximity to the golf course. And when I explained to them that it was going to be tax free, they were saying, where do I sign? And I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. And some are pretty sizable homes. But yeah, some of these, you know, like uh, an NBC or whatever for all their things, you know, these are pretty good sized homes that had, you know, eight bedrooms, some of them. They would, you know, if you didn't mind somebody having your house for two weeks. So think about what you could do to your house with $50,000. So, okay. So that's where that comes in with that, okay? That's what you have to that's what you have to run the risk on, okay? All right. Um, page 915, uh, we talk about limits on rental losses. You know, this is where, depending on what somebody charges and what they do, a lot of times they'll show a loss from their rental property. And that's not uncommon because of appreciating and depending on what it is. But the big thing you have to understand is they have to get fair market value, okay? Renting to my brother Joe at below market value and then showing a loss is not going to work. If I'm not charging the fair market for where that rental property is located, then I can't really say I'm actively participating. That's a whole different ballgame when you're renting it to a relative below market value, okay? Does everybody kind of understand that? That's kind of you know, double dipping around the system, okay? Yes? Would that be considered a hobby? Or, you know, if they're rich to their cousin or whatever, Yeah. Um, the big thing is, is in a situation like that, they're looking to take the loss on their tax return. So really, it doesn't show up on the tax return because if you put the rental income there and then they show the mortgage interest, property tax, all the expenses, depreciation, they're just running it at a loss on purpose by renting it and then taking it to use it to lower their taxable income. So, you know, the reporting of it, okay? So, all right. So there are limitations on what you can do as far as your losses on there, okay? Um, Okay, we don't have to really get into the net investment income. Um, and from reading this, is uh, rental income, is it passive or non-passive? 
passive. Yep. Okay. Which to me makes no sense because if you're taking care of a rental property, the last thing you're doing is just sitting back being passive. Okay. I don't know how many of you have rental property and have to maintain it, but you know, um, somebody's trashing it every time they're living there. I think the last thing that it would be is considered passive, but that's what the activity is considered there. Okay. All right. So let's go to 919 and we're going to talk about the schedule E. Okay. Now, if we go on to line 17 of our tax, okay, Schedule E has a bunch of different components to it. Um, we're going to talk a little bit in a second about the K-1s. Uh, again, we've talked about those as far as income. They are the W-2 of the partnership corporation world, uh, or if you own part of a, a um, oil well or something like that, or mineral rights, you know, whatever you're involved in that you're an investor in, you might get a K-1. Sometimes people get K-1s from their retirement funds, depending on how it's set up, okay? Because their retirement fund might be investing in precious metals or oil or whatever. And as part of that, you get your royalties coming from that, from a K-1, okay? But the one we're going to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, is page one. All right. So income or loss from rental, real estate, and royalties, okay? As we work down this, you can kind of see this is where I'm renting personal property. As it says up at the top, if you are in the business of renting personal property, you schedule C. So what would that be? Anybody have anything? Would that be though, um, I don't know, kind of where they rent out equipment? Uh, that would be bulldozers or Yeah, could be. Whatever. Could be personal property. I'm thinking more of a long line for broker. Okay? I don't really own the personal property. Okay? But I, I'm the one that's kind of renting for people. It's like a holding company or a broker that doesn't really own it per se, but their job is renting it. Okay, so, you know, that's where, you know, it's a little bit more of a business with that. Um, 1099s, they show up here. If I have somebody that works for me, say I have a handyman or a landscaper that takes care of all my properties, he's not considered my employer, or excuse me, my employee, but I am having him do work around there, I may issue him a 1099. Sometimes you'll see this with uh, somebody that lives in, you know, has a couple four unit things side by side and has kind of taken one of the people that lives there has kind of made them the super. All right. And he may give him a break on his rent or whatever. Well, that's compensation. What's he need to do? If that's over $600. Give him a 1099 unemployed compensation. Okay. So that you can, and that's where, you know, it's asking, did you, did you do those and did you file? Okay. Now, as we get down here, all right, we can see we have all of our categories, okay? Single family residence, all right, so if I want a bunch of houses. Multi-family residence, that's usually going to be, you know, duplex or greater, okay? Uh, we got our vacation or short-term rental, commercial, uh, land, you know, you might just be renting land, okay? All right, um, royalties, we talk about there, self-rental, and other. Any idea what any others would be? Okay. All right, so let's do this. Oh. Yeah, I took it out of there. Shoot. Okay. So we put our addresses of our rental property in there. Okay. All right. 
and we'll put in there that the type that it is and the fair rental days, okay? This is where I'm talking about if we have something that's a personal vacation. Most of the time, when we have rental properties, what are we gonna put in? It's available for rent what? 365, 365 okay? But if it's a case that, you know, for the month of June or whatever, we're keeping it for personal use, then we have to back that out, okay? Down here we have, uh, as you can see, 1099 miscellaneous on line three or four, okay? What shows up on a 1099 miscellaneous? Does anybody remember? Yeah, well, let's bring one up, okay? If you look there, boxes one and two say what? Rents and royalties, all right, okay? So that's where if you get a 1099 miscellaneous and it's rent or royalties, this is right where you're gonna go on the Schedule E. Now, if I rent my apartment to Tim, okay, do I have to issue him a 1099? Or excuse me, should he issue me a 1099? That he paid me rent? Doesn't necessarily have to do it, doesn't, doesn't make much sense, okay? Where you see a 1099 miscellaneous with rent is rent subsidy. A lot of times you'll get a 1099 and this would say Erie County Housing Authority. And that they paid you to subsidize somebody's rent that's living in your apartment or your rental property. Okay? So yeah, typically on a usual rent or landlord arrangement or lease, there's no 1099s involved. But if you're getting something from say a housing authority or somebody else that's paying you, obviously the government's gonna give you a 1099 that says, hey, we gave you $3,000 towards this individual's rent, okay? And then royalties, they'll show up in that box right there. You'd get a 1099 miscellaneous that you'd have royalties and we'd go right into that portion of the Schedule E, okay? All right, so back to my Schedule E, okay? So, and then, you, like I said, you'll list the property there, rents received. You don't necessarily have to go in there and get that you know, 1099. Now, if we look here, here is all of our expenses, okay? All the different things that we can write off as expenses. Advertising, you know, like I said, the travel, um, you know, that we use. Cleaning and maintenance, you know, anything that I do to it. Uh, commissions, you know, if I, you know, had somebody that was renting for me and I paid them a commission based on renting it, that would be there. Insurance, most people will have insurance on it, okay? Homeowner's insurance, this is the one where you do get to write it off, okay? Because if I'm insuring the property, in case it burns down, I get to write it off. My personal residence, I don't get to take that homeowner's insurance, but I do here, okay? Uh, legal professional fees, obviously your accountant or lawyer, you gotta do an eviction from the previous tenant. Okay, uh, management fees we've talked about, if there's a mortgage on it, okay? Repairs, now, repairs is where we gotta kinda distinguish between repairs and what would be considered a capital improvement, all right? If I'm repainting the inside between tenants, that's much more repairs, okay? You know, if I'm changing the locks on the doors or you know, had to put a new faucet in or change out the toilet, you know, whatever it may be. Those are repairs, okay? If I'm redoing the bathroom, that's a capital improvement. So I'm gonna lump it all together, my supplies and my labor and anything else that it costs me to renovate that, and I'm gonna add it to as a, as kind of a single project, if you will, and depreciate it, okay? Supplies, again, gotta be very careful. You know, just those little things that what you're doing. I get, put a snow shovel at each door for it, whatever it may be, okay? I'm a nice landlord, Michelle, so, okay? All right? Taxes, property taxes that you pay, okay? Utilities, all right? Depreciation we're gonna talk about in a second, okay? Uh, some of this will be, we're not gonna worry about the K-1, we'll come back to that. And so that is all of the things that I can take as expenses. Now, like I said, a lot of times what happens is because of depreciation, you may show a loss.
especially in a year where you couldn't rent it the whole year, okay? And there's a limitation on that amount of that loss that can be taken, all right? And what's the one big question that it asked down here? Did you actively participate in the rental activity during 2015? Okay, that would light up red when there's a loss. Okay, if I buy a rental property in November and I spend November and December fixing it up, all right, and I had expenses, but I never advertised or never said it was available for rental, was I really materially participating as, as a landlord or a rental? No. no. Okay? So that time where it's sitting idle while I'm getting it ready to rent, it's not going to be necessarily something I can write off as an expense. It has to be where I'm materially participating in it. All right? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. And then, like I said, you know, you can see that it's all going to be at risk. All right, I haven't figured out why it's at risk, but it's passive. That's just the way the IRS works, okay? And then if you have losses that exceed what your limitation is, you can have, this is where those net operating losses can carry forward, okay? All right? So if I have a year where maybe I evicted somebody in February and to spend two months a whole bunch of money to get it ready to rent and somebody moved back in in November, I was actively participating in it. You know, it was just I had to do it and I might have some huge losses because you know that they punched holes in the walls and you know the hardwood floors were all scratched from a dog or whatever it is, had a lot of overhead. Well, you know, based on my income on my tax return, I might not be able to take all those losses. Well, just because I can't take them because I didn't have enough rental income, some of them will carry over to the next year. So it's not like you're gonna lose it, okay? All right? Okay. All right. Um, Okay, we're gonna talk real quick about depreciation and then we'll take a break and we'll go through a problem, okay? Line 18 talks about depreciation. So if I go in there, I'm gonna get a link where I get a form called a 4562, okay? Depreciation or an amortization, okay? Oh, before I forget, on that, see where it says rental A worksheet, part year rental ownership worksheet? Don't click on it. Take your hands off the mouse, okay? Uh, reason I say that, this is one of those forms, and I, I think it happened to Michelle once where you got into that where you thought you could do a 50-50 on a duplex. Um, this is one of those forms that you do not, I repeat, you do not want to get into because it turns your whole tax return red, okay, and you can't get rid of it. So do not use the part year rental worksheet. If you have a duplex that's 50%, I want you just to do the 50%, okay? All right, so do not go into there. Promise me you will not go into there because if I get a call from a supervisor that so-and-so in your class use the rental part year wor worksheet, okay, then I'm gonna feel bad. I'm not even going to tell you how to get to it. What do you mean? <laughs> All right, line 18 of the Schedule E where it says depreciation. Yep. So hit F9 there. I'll, let, I'll, I'll give you that much, okay? I'm going to show it to you, but I do not want you to use it, okay? If you look at this, what this thing is, is, is it's very good, okay? However... Like I said, if you don't use this, as soon as I go to this, I can't put anything on my Schedule E. I have to use this, all right? And when you're thinking about a duplex, it's nice because it did 
50%. I can put in that half of my rental. Okay, I can put in the full rental income, but then it is, and then the other thing that I can allow is that it will calculate for me, okay? But this is where you need to know, all right? If I live in a duplex, and I put a new refrigerator in my half, can I deduct that? If I live in a duplex and I put a new roof on, what do I do with it? Half of it, okay? So if it's something, if I put a new driveway in, half, okay? Anything that relates to the whole house, I can take half of it in the duplex, all right? But like I said, do not use the sheet because Oh, sure enough. Soon as I do this, what color did all of my little zeros turn? Yellow. Now I'm locked out of them. Okay, because what's yellow mean? It's a calculated entry that comes from somewhere else. Before they were all green. Okay, so say that I have advertising that I want to put in there and I start typing a number in there, what's it say? Calculated. All right, so all of a sudden it gets real fuzzy. Like I said, so I don't want you to use that part of your rental at all, okay? All right? Depreciation. Okay? This is a depreciation sheet, okay? And all depreciation goes on a 4562, but what do you think I'm going to say, Tim? It doesn't go on the 4562, okay? The business activity, you know, I could put up their rental of 123 Main Street or whatever, you know, describes whatever that activity is. So I'm going to create kind of a header on my 4562, and then all of those things inside of that is going to go on an asset worksheet. See where it says description of property on line six? What's it say right there, Tim, after that? For accurate computation, use what? Ah, it even tells us for accurate computation. Okay, I'm guessing that's probably a pretty good place to be. So we're going to go into there. I'm going to get an asset worksheet. All right. And I need to make this smaller so you guys can see it. It's okay. This is where all of our assets. So basically what's going to happen on your tree on the left, you're going to have a 4562 for each one of your rental properties. And like I said, you can just make the header 123 Main Street or whatever. Underneath that, we're going to have little asset worksheets. Kind of like we got a header, and that's our book. And then there's a bunch of little chapters underneath it for each asset. Okay? We're going to describe the asset. It might be... One, two, three, Main Street, duplex, or whatever it is for the main building, okay? When I go here, I'm gonna put in my date placed in service. My asset type, okay? Now don't laugh at these, they're a little archaic, okay? All right? But we're gonna go through here, and yes, there is special depreciation for cattle breeding or dairy, okay? Don't laugh, I know all about this one, because depending on what you do to that steer, it might take it down where you got to depreciate it because it's going to be giving birth down the road, or you don't depreciate it because why? It's tomorrow's hamburger and steak. Okay? <laughs> All right? Okay? So you can kind of see how things with the different things are there. Okay? Dairy cow, same thing. But you're going to have a whole bunch of categories here. All right? The ones we're going to use when we're talking about rentals, you can see appliance rental. Okay? Um... I don't know why computer software is in there, okay? You can see here furniture and fixtures for rental or non-rental, okay? When we go into something with a business, if we're buying desk and stuff like that, okay? But you can see our furniture and a bunch of stuff about the Indian Reservation, okay? It says leasehold improvements residential. When I do improvements to my rental, okay? And then if we keep on going down, 
we have real property residential rental, okay? So if I click on that one, all right, and I'm gonna say I bought it at the beginning of this year, okay? And, I'm, and then you have a little asset thing that talks about the parent property. So you can keep track of which one it goes to. So it'll flow to the right 4562 or whatever so that you know that it's, you know, if I buy a refrigerator and I have six rental properties, I need to make sure that refrigerator stays attached to where I put it, okay? So on your schedule, e, you'll have, you know, the rental property there, okay? Now, if you look down here, what did it do to our recovery period? We get 27 and a half years on line four. Okay, all right. Okay, so if I have a $200,000 rental property that I bought, I can depreciate it over 27 and a half years. All right, salvage or land value. Does land really have any value for depreciation? No. So typically what the rule of thumb is, if you bought a rental property that obviously sits on a piece of land, unless it's you bought space on the next Mars rover that you're renting a condo on the way to Mars or something. But land, generally the rule of thumb is just take 10% and that's the land value, okay? So if I have a $200,000 rental property I bought, I take 20,000 and put it in there for land value, okay? Now, Here's where we can get into half business, okay? So we have a business use is 50%. So if I have a duplex, this is where I put my 50% in, okay? Uh, rest of the depreciation, we're not gonna really worry about because those are things that come up with the property and stuff like that, okay? And then we'll talk later about the calculation with the conventions and go through that when we catch up on depreciation. But basically what I wanna show you, is if I have $200,000 and $20,000, okay, what is the basis for my depreciation? $180,000, okay, and then it calculates, all right, the depreciation down there, all right. And minimum. Okay, and obviously it didn't like that, so let me try to hold on, fat fingers, there we go, okay. You bought it this year, so it's zero depreciation for the I typed in 2016 with fat fingers, okay, yeah. So, so I bought it at the beginning of the year, you can see that I can take $6,273 and put it against my rental income, okay. So that's a pretty good chunk of my rental income that can be taken away, isn't it? Because I'm depreciating the value of my rental property. And that doesn't probably include my mortgage interest and my property taxes. So if I'm renting this at $1,000 a month, 12,000, what did I just do with half of my income? <laughs> What's that? Broke it off as a <laughs> you can see why the IRS says, well, you got half of your rental income tax-free, now it's time to pay the piper later. Okay? All right? So that's your introduction to depreciation. Like I said, we'll get into much more. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. I just want to kind of get you more acclimated with it. Okay? But, like I said, up above, you know, choosing the right asset description, if we take a look and I have, we'll say I bought a $200,000, one of those smart refrigerators that tells you what you're supposed to shop for. You can see that my recovery period, once I did that, five years. So it'll change my, my, my recovery period, which is how long I get to depreciate, okay? If I did, uh, if I change my asset type up at the top of that worksheet to a leasehold improvement residential, 
Okay. You can see that if halfway through the life of my rental property, I decide to do $200,000 in renovation, I get to depreciate that for what? 27 and a half years. So even though I may be halfway through my depreciation, my 27 and a half years of owning the rental property, when I do a capital improvement, what happens? I start over on that with 27 and a half, okay? It doesn't just go as long as to the end of that. So I may, when I sell it, have not fully depreciated improvements that I did to the house. Okay? All right. Okay. Any questions so far besides on depreciation? Okay. All right. So let's take about five minutes and then we're going to go through some problems here on this. Okay. You know, if, if it's a new client, I'd sit down and ask them a few questions to get to know them. Um, chances are when they've called in to make the appointment, we'd have a little bit. So, okay. All right, Nancy, you're a new client with us. Yes. Uh, can I get your social security number to start the return? Oh, certainly. Uh, it's um, 051 44 Okay. One more time for me. Zero five one. Oops. Okay. Four four. Mm -hmm. One 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 one. All right. Okay. All right. That's Nancy. Nancy, do you have a middle initial? No. Just okay. Nancy. Okay. And Nancy, are you married? Um. No. Okay. Uh, what's your address? It's um, 65 mm -hmm. Pinewood Avenue. Okay. And that's in Niagara Falls. Okay. You live in Williamsville now. Uh, All yes. right. Can I get a phone number for you? Oh, certainly. Um, area code 716-773-2222. Okay. All right. Is that a day and evening number? Oh, yes, both. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, what's your date of birth, Nancy? It's August 2nd, 1978. All right, and what's your occupation? Uh, I'm a hairdresser. Okay. Do you do your own? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> you do a nice job. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and you just file single by yourself, or do you have any dependents? I have no dependents. Okay, no? so you're just single. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you'd be single by yourself. Yes. Okay. Uh, we said no dependents. You lived in the state of New York all year long? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. And we're going to electronically file this for you. All right, which means it'll go in uh, as soon as we're done today. We'll electronically file on your behalf. Oh, excellent. Uh, would you like to pay for the re uh, return to be done, or would you like to have it taken out of your refund? I'll take it right out of my refund. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And do you have your bank information? Would you oh. like direct deposit done, I saw on oh, your yes. sheet? Yes, of course. I use... Um, I use M&T Bank. Okay. It's, um, All right. I have the, I have the routing number. What's your account number? It's 555-222-5. Um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to use your zip code as your five-digit PIN for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, and let's see, did you have health insurance all year long? Oh, let me, let me make sure. Uh, yes, I have all okay. year. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get that insurance from the marketplace or was that from an employer? Well, that was through my employer. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, and you said you had it for all 12 months, correct? Yes, okay, mm -hmm. good, all right. Well, we'll start wherever you'd like to. Um, what do you have in information for me? Do you have a W-2 that you have income? Oh, um, yes. I, um, I work for uh, Gina's Hair Supplies. Okay. Gina's Hair Care Supplies. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll go, go ahead and put two from them. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put that in for you. Oh, okay. And Gina's is... Okay. And like I said, most of the time when you have um, um, uh, 
you put in that EIN number, a lot of them will carry forward that there'll be history. So it'll fill in for you and you won't have to type in all of the. Okay, we got your income here. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And I see that you're eligible for a retirement plan, but you didn't participate in one. Is that correct? That's right. I'm covered, but um, okay. no, I didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, for the EIN number for New York, you can always use the same number that was there for the federal. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, just the one W-2 for you, Nancy? Um, yes, that's my only employer. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Must have been must have been an old amount, huh? Yeah, the Medicare is wrong too, isn't it? It looks almost looks like a fourteen calculation. Okay. So that's an automatic calculation on there. All right. Okay. Uh, any other income that you had? Oh, yes, I, I did go to um, the casino, or, I mean, the lottery, and I, I, I did win some money at the lottery. Okay. The New York State Lottery. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, they gave me this W2G. Okay, so we'll put that in. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much did you win? I won um, $659. Good for you. Was that on slots? Are you, oh, are you yeah. playing yeah. blackjack? Oh. I'm always in there. I lost a huge amount, though. What do you mean you lost? Aren't you only supposed to win when you do those? No? Oh, well, this is the only time I ever won anything. That's the first time you've ever won? Yeah. How long have you been going to the casino? Oh, 20 years or so. Okay. okay. Since it opened? Oh, yeah. That's every Friday night. And you said you won how much? Six uh, $659. Okay. All right. Okay. But you said you had some losses? Um, let me just check my records here. And uh, no, because um, I don't have anything here that shows anything about losses. I guess I didn't keep track of them. Look at your fourth bullet. Oh, my. Um, Oh yes, um, right. I do have receipts here. I, I'm sorry, one thousand dollars worth of losses. Okay. Know, like I said, I'm always in there. Now you can write off losses, but we can only write losses up to and equal to our winnings. Mm, so I'm only going to be able to put in six hundred fifty-nine dollars of losses. Six fifty-nine. Yep. Okay. So that's in there. Okay. Okay. All right. Everybody saw where I did that, just to make sure that it was equal. Okay. okay down there on the bottom of my W two G. Okay. All right. Any other income for you, Nancy? Oh yes, um, I do have some. Uh, um, what do I have here? Uh, interest. Um, yes, I do have some interest. Okay. This, um, I do have a 1099 INT that they gave me. Okay. From the First National Bank. All yeah. right. Okay. And I'll take and put that in there. Was that from savings or was there some bonds that you sold? Well, that was, um, let's see, that was from, let me make sure here. It was just interest. Okay. So interest, we nope. did have a little bit of interest there on the, had some bonds on there. So I'm going to put those in too. Oh, yes. That, that's uh, big interest from the bonds too. Mm -hmm. Bank interest and bond interest. And since those are U.S. savings bonds, they are not taxable on the state side. Oh, okay. But federal, do they tax me on that? They do on the federal. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. And let's see, last year, uh, did you itemize last year? Um, let's see, last year... Um, I filed a 1040 and I itemized last okay. year, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you have a refund on the state side? Yes, I got $342 back. 
Okay. I hate to tell you, but New York State's going to tell the IRS all about that. You got to pay tax on it. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, any other income that you have? Do you have? Uh, oh, um, yeah. I do have. Um, I got this. Um, I do have a rental property, which I should. Oh, okay. About. All right. And um, I do okay. get a little subsidy from the city rental authority to okay. rent it out. All right. Okay. Now, tell me about the rental property. Do you rent it all, or do you live in half of it? Well, I live in half of the house. Okay. And uh, I rent out the other half. All right. So it's a multifamily. So that's at your address, correct? And what's yes. that address again? Oh, that's at uh, 65 Pinewood Avenue. Pinewood Avenue. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that's a multifamily, and it was for available for rent all year long. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now you said you got some rent subsidy. Right. Yes, I got it from. Um, it's on a uh, 1099 MISC. Okay. Sure. All right. So yep, there it is, the one from the City Rental Authority. Yeah. So we'll yeah. put that in. Mm -hmm. Did you receive any other rent? Um, Over and above the subsidy? No, that was all. Okay. Mm -hmm. How's that work for you, getting that rental subsidy from the... Oh, that's great. You know, I always look forward to that check from the city. Okay, at least you know your rent's getting paid, right? Oh, yeah. You don't have to chase yeah, down the rental right. property from... You did it with that. And that's all they, they paid is the eighty five hundred and forty five dollars. Eighty five forty five twenty two. Um and as you notice here, can everybody see where I'm at on my ten ninety nine miscellaneous? Up here it asks for the parent property because I have column A, B, and C. See how when I did the little carrot pull down, what's it show me? My address there. Yep. So it that way it links it to my property. Okay. All right. Where did you put my my um, subsidy? In? Oh, that's my. Oh, that's the rental income. Yep. That's and everybody saw where I did the rental income. So then I'm on the I went into the rent received. Hit F nine. Got a ten ninety nine miscellaneous. And I'm in there, and I just filled it out. Put the rent up there, just like it shows up on the document. I have, uh, like I said, up here, the parent property. It'll pull down for me and say I own two or three different properties. Then you have to do a duplicate schedule E and then, oh. yep. So then you kind of start all over with ABC. There's no DEF. So, okay. Mm -hmm. If I got more money from my renter, where would that go then? If I got the reason I asked him about his additional rental income, if I'm here and he has a 1099 miscellaneous, I'd put that on there. Then I'd do a scratch pad for the remainder of it. So say he charged an additional $200 that he got directly from the tenant, okay? So that way you'd have a 1099 miscellaneous and some income on a scratch pad and it would add them together on that line on the Schedule E, okay? All right, okay, so do are you paying a mortgage on the property? Um, I see here, I just check my records. So Look at page 98. I'll help you out, Nancy. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, the bank did send me um, a statement. A 1098? A 1098, yeah. Okay. And I got that. Okay, what was the mortgage interest you paid? Uh, I paid um, 100, excuse me, I paid $11,500 okay. in mortgage interest. Okay, since that's for the entire and that you have, um, half of it is your personal, okay? Yeah. Half of it will go here, all right? So you divide that in half? Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do with the other half is I'm going to go over to the Schedule A and I will put that on there, the other half, okay? Mm -hmm. So half of it stays with you personally on your itemized and half of it will go on your rental, okay? Mm -hmm. Is there any property taxes? Yes, um, $5,100. Okay, whoops. That's the total for the whole place. How much is the total? Uh, 5100 Oh, yeah, 5,100 okay. All right, so again, half of that will go on your Schedule A for your itemized, 
and the other half will go on your rental property. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, do you pay any homeowners insurance? Uh, yes, um, seven hundred dollars total. Okay. Again, same thing because you own half of it. We can put half on the property. You don't get to write off any of the renter's insurance for yourself. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we have to take a look at the property. So mm -hmm. you bought the house. Yes. Okay. So you get to depreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so and the address is 65 um, yeah. Pinewood. Pinewood. And it's a duplex. All right. And this is a residential rental. Mm -hmm. And when did you buy it? I bought that um, April 4th of 2006. Okay. <coughs> now, I'm not going to take time to do it right now, but if he was a new if if she was a new client, sorry, didn't mean to offend you, Nancy. Oh, that's all right. I hear that all the time. Okay. Um, if she was a new client, and I'm doing her 2015 return, and she explains to me that she bought it in 2006, what's my next question going to be? Have you been depreciating it in previous years? Mm -hmm. Okay. If not, what am I going to have to do? Amend the tax return. I'm going to have to do some calculation. Okay. Either see the prior year's return that somebody was depreciating it. If they were not, I'm going to start it here, but I have to go get prior depreciation so I have a record of it in case he comes or she comes to me next year and says that she's selling the duplex. Okay. So again, pull down says rental is the property real estate residential rental I'm gonna say yes okay and what did you pay for it Nancy um, I paid you 135,000 okay mm -hmm. sounds like a pretty good deal oh, yeah. um, again we talked about and it says right in there land value 13,500 10% perfect rule okay mm -hmm. now right here business use this is where I'm going to put in 50%, okay, because Nancy lives in half of it and we're renting half, okay? So you can see what it does. My basis on line two is now reduced to 60750 okay? All right. Mid-month, okay, we'll talk about our conventions when we get a little more into the depreciation. And what is still red on my depreciation right now? Prior depreciation, okay? When I teach a little bit more about depreciation and doing the calculation, I'll show you how this works. Because basically, you got to go into one of those little tables, you got to look it up, and go back and calculate it, okay? And catch it up, because that way, if they sell it, all right? Okay. Any other expenses you have for your rental property? Oh, yeah, I did some uh, repairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. I paid... Uh uh, roof repair was $89. I did pay that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other expenses? Oh, yeah. I had to advertise to get my, my tenant. Okay. I paid $75 for that. All right. Okay. Um, I had some legal fees involved with the, the property. Okay. $75. And that was relating just to the rental side of it? Yes. Okay. Yes, we had to evict someone. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then... Um, well, then I pay a garbage. I pay for garbage. And okay. I pay six hundred a year for the whole house. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do with this one? I'm going to use my utility line on seventeen. What I'm going to do is go in and I'm going to create a scratch pad. Okay, because I want to separate the utilities. So we had uh, what we say he had a garbage. user fee for U garbage. User fee gar for garbage. Yeah. That okay. Six hundred total. So if it's six hundred total for the house, how much do I get to take? 300 okay uh, what about uh, what any other utilities oh, we have water for the whole house mm -hmm. um, $750 for the whole year so again 750 for the whole year okay all right anything else that you did well I don't know if this counts but I bought a new stove for my tenant 
um, last year. Okay. So year, and uh, that cost $800. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do for this is we're on a, oops, I got to put my, was it 65? 65. Okay. So I'm going to go in. And actually, what I can do is go to my asset worksheet. I'm going to copy because what am I putting in? Appliance. I'm just going to call it a stove. Okay. Pretty simple. Asset type, it's appliances for the rental. And when did you buy that form, Nancy? Uh, I bought that, um, let's see, uh, I bought that August 4th of 2014. Okay. And again, as soon as I go down, I can pin it to the property that I want. And how much did you spend on that? Uh, $800. Okay. Now, do I take half of it? Why not? That's for the tenant only. Okay, so I can take 100% of it. All right. Okay. And again, you'd have to do some calculation because why? We missed a year. All right. Okay. All right. Anything else that you've done to the property? Yeah, one more thing. I had to remodel the entire bathroom for the tenants. Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to have a bathroom remodel. Okay. All right, and this is where I would put under this is I go down to leaseholds, improvements, residential. Okay. When did you do the bathroom for that? Well, oh, that was August 16th of this year. Okay. All right, and that was for the property in Pinewood. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how much did you spend? I spent $8,678. Did you put a hot tub in there for him? Oh, there was a mess. That's why I had to evict that other guy. Okay, all right, and that was only for the rental? Right, Okay. Just for the tenants. That's an expensive bathroom. Oh. Okay, all right. Any other expenses you have for it? I think we got everything here. The roof, the advertising, the legal fees, user fee, water. No, that's that's it for my expenses. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other income that you had? Well, let me see here. Um, uh, let's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. That's all I have. All right. Well, let me show you what we got, Nancy, and we'll see if anything else comes mm -hmm. to mind. Okay. Um, I have your W-2 income from the hair supply. Mm -hmm. Um, I had some interest income from when you had the bank account and cashing in the bonds. Right. Did you have any dividends from any investments? Let's see if I have anything like that. No. Okay. No. Uh, we got your refund because you did itemize last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have our refund. Okay. Uh, no alimony, no self-employment or home-based business? No. Uh, did you sell any stock or land for capital gains? No. Uh, did you take any money out of any of your retirement pensions or annuities? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, we have our rental property. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, if you take a look, our rental property here, we have um, rent received, okay, from our subsidy, and we have all of our expenses. Uh, we didn't have any miles, but we won't worry about that. That would be using my next question for him. Um, and it shows that we're going to have a loss, okay? And obviously, you actively participated in this, mm -hmm. okay? Um, everybody see what happened to the refund, okay? Prior to me allowing the loss that they can take because of the, 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 the passive activity, mm -hmm. they had a balance due of $354, Nancy did. Mm -hmm. She did actively participate, so I'm going to check that box. I just went to a $193 refund. See what, I can, see what I mean about the fact that that depreciation, all that stuff, that tax-free money from your rental property, okay? So if you look here, we had $8,545 of rental income, but we had $12,163 of expenses. Mortgage? Taxes and our depreciation. Uh, those three added to a little over $11,000 alone. So you can see how you could offset rental income. Okay. All right. 
So that's where we had everything on that, Nancy. That depreciation will include everything going forward mm -hmm. with the uh, stove. Yep, mm -hmm. that always helps. And next okay. year, that'll help you too, right? No. Oh, it, it'll help you for the next 27 and a half years. Mm -hmm. Did you have something you're missing on there? Where did you put the... Repairs, $89. Where did I put the... But the stove we can do what with? Yep. And the bathroom renovation, we have to depreciate that too, okay? All right, Nancy, uh, we have your rental on there, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, did you draw any unemployment at all during 2015? No, no. Um, any other miscellaneous income that you received besides your gambling winnings? No, that was it. Okay. Um, you don't have a high deductible plan, so there's no health savings account. You didn't move. No. And no self-employment. Mm -hmm. And did you make any contributions to any retirement accounts? Um, no, I didn't. Okay. Not this year. So our income comes up to the top. Uh, we were able to itemize. The standard deduction for you would have been $6,300. So we're going to go visit our itemized deductions. Uh, medical, you would have had to have an excess of $3,700 in order to qualify for any medical deductions. Um, did you buy any new cars during 2015? No, I didn't. Okay. So we have that, we have your half of your property taxes, okay? Half your mortgage interest, uh, no charitable contributions to Goodwill or anything like that, no. or any cash to Good United Way. Um, didn't have any job expenses. I charged you $200 last year to do your return, um, but we don't get to write that off, okay? But obviously $10,213 is greater than 6,300, so we did itemize, okay? All right. So we have your itemized, the exemption of 4,000. So you actually have a tax bill of $3,008. Uh, we didn't do any credits. Did you do anything to your home to make it more energy efficient? No, not this year. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. You didn't uh, put up a windmill or dig a hole to the center of the earth to heat the house? <laughs> no, Okay. thinking about it. Thinking about it in the spare time? Okay, industrious, I like that, all right. So we have our total tax. You had tax withholding out of your paychecks at 3201. So that's where we come up with $193 refund on the federal side, okay? We'll put that into your same account. Mm -hmm. All right, that is a checking account, is that correct? Checking, mm -hmm. okay. Five, five. That's at M&T Bank, of course, and mm -hmm. five, 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 two, 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 five. Okay. All right, on the state side, Let's see, you're living in Erie County, what school district? Yeah, we're in uh, Williamsville. Okay. Okay, any bank accounts, any foreign countries I need to know about? No. Okay, good answer, it's too much paperwork. <laughs> All right, everything comes over exactly the same from the federal to the state. So you can see on line 19 here, you got your uh, federal adjusted gross income, okay? Uh, we get to take out our state refund and our interest on our bonds. We don't have to pay tax in New York on those. So we're subtracting those out. Uh, here's our itemized deductions, what we're allowed to take in New York. What happens on the New York side, okay? Here's your itemized list, uh, like your Schedule A from the federal. The one thing that we don't get to take is the taxes paid out of our paycheck for state tax, okay? So you can see that we have to reduce it by that. That's where we get to the eighty-nine fifty-nine. Okay, so it's not the same amount as the federal, the ten to thirteen. Okay, all right. So we have that. We have your tax bill in New York, thirteen hundred eighty-nine dollars, and you only had twelve fifty-four taken out of your paychecks. So you do have a balance due of one hundred thirty-five dollars to the state. So all in all, not a bad year, it's kind of a wash.
federal refund 193 and state 135. So you had all your money throughout the year in your pocket to use as you wish. All right. Okay. All right. And for me to do your return this year is two hundred forty-two dollars. Oh, I don't have enough to, to pay that. Right now, I'll, I'll be taking that out of your refund. Oh, you can do that. Yes, I can. If I did, if you paid directly, though, it would only be one hundred seventy-two dollars because the banks charge us seventy dollars to process out of the refund. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. I think I'll just pay that. Okay. Uh, I don't get the seventy dollars. I wish I had that job of uh, pushing the button to do the seventy dollars out of there. So one seventy two to, excuse me, do the return this year. Okay. Well, you can take that right out of there. And well, I'd have to charge you an extra seventy dollars. Oh. So you can either pay two forty two to have that done, or one hundred seventy two to me, and it's all set. Yeah, I better pay the one seventy two to you here. Okay. Save the seventy dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can take a neighbor out to dinner or something. Or buy something new for the rental. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yes. oh, of course. All right. So about a thirty-minute return. That's about typical for rental. Okay, with new and all the things like that. Any questions? I know I went through it pretty fast. I could hear everybody going, "Where did you get that? Where did you do that? Where that?" Okay. All right. So if you look on here, we had uh, kind of, I'll kind of go line by line like I did, all right? So we have the wages off the W-2. Remember on my Schedule B, I had interest income and savings bonds, okay? So on, on my interest statement, I always personally break them out. Uh, First National Bank, box one. First National Bond, bank uh, box three. And then I made my state adjustment as I explained to them. Now, the reason I do what I do going line by line, because that's where the discussion about a rental property in Crystal Beach tends to come up, okay? Because they'll go, oh, well, what's that? You know, or did you do anything to your house to make it more energy efficient this year? Not something you typically think about bringing in. They'll go, oh, yeah, we put a new furnace in. Or, hey, we did some windows. Do we get anything? Well, it might be pretty minimal, but if I can find them an extra $75 or $100, that's an extra $75 or $100 on their refund. You know, I asked about, did you make any contributions to a retirement account? You know, I didn't do it right here because we were kind of explaining the return. That's where I might say, well, have you thought about it? Okay, because I see that you have a retirement account at work, you're not participating, but if I take, and I'm gonna do a little what if here, and if I say to Nancy, hey, you know, if you do and put in $1,000 into a retirement account in your name, a traditional one, okay? I now have your federal refund of $343 and you only owe 70 to the state. So that $1,000 really only cost you about, give or take, about $790 to put in there. Okay, so they can reduce their tax liability and stretch their retirement money. Well, I don't have an extra thousand. Well, I can file it as it stands right now. You would have till April 15th to put that thousand dollars in there. So those are things you can talk to them about, okay? And then when I'm done with the what if mode, I go there, hit no, and everything goes right back to the way it was before, okay? So we have that, all right? Um, the Schedule E was the big one, okay? And this was everybody's going, where did he go? How did he get there? And I saw Nancy watching the screen going, where did he put that? Okay. So you can see I started out, I have no 1099s. I received a 1099 from my rental authority, but I had none. Okay. I put my address in. You know, we determined that it is a multifamily. Even as a duplex, that's considered multifamily. So I put it in there as a two. Okay. Uh, he said it was for rent all year. Again, rents received, line three there, all right? I put it in on a 1099 miscellaneous because that's what I received from the city rental authority, all right? You can see here on this little part, we have a pull-down menu. A, what's it say? Two, 
for the type of rental it is, multifamily, and then the address, the Pinewood Ave. Okay, all right, so that gets me my income. And then you can see I had ways of putting everything right straight in. We talked about advertising. If I saw a zero for auto and travel, I'd probably say to Nancy, did you drive to collect the rent or anything to do to the rental or getting supplies or anything like that? Those are miles that we can take. Uh, insurance was on the 1098. So if you look on the 1098 on page 98, there was uh, house insurance, $700. Well, that was for the whole house. That included the side that I live in, or Nancy lives in, okay? So we can only take half. Uh, we had $75 in legals. As he said, he evicted the previous person. Mortgage interest. Well, it says there $11,500, okay? So I take half of it on my rental, and where does the other half go? Schedule A, okay? Same thing with the taxes, $5,100. I got $2,550 on taxes on line 16. The other half, Schedule A, okay? All right. Okay. What's that? $89, right? All right, so we have that. Okay, that's off the 1098. Now, we're gonna go back to page 95. This is where the bullet points come in, okay? First thing was is Nancy bought rental property. Okay, she bought in 2006. So I'm gonna go into my depreciation line. All right, and I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna start a 4562. A depreciation amortization you can see for 65 Pinewood. So I'm gonna have that, okay? Once I'm on there, all right, everything goes on this form, but nothing goes on this form, all right? I'm gonna go where it says description of property, and what's it say there, Tim? Yep, for accurate computation, F9 to worksheet. You can see now, I gotta have this, and we have rental properties and things like that, that this, goes to here and you have to scroll down because they know from being a rental that every single thing they do for an improvement like that, okay? All right. Okay, so on there we put in there, so we're gonna, first thing we're gonna have, Duplaz, how, how's my spelling doing there, okay. We'll change that to duplex, okay? So we have the 65 Pinewood duplex, so the building itself, our asset type is a residential rental. I put the year I placed it in service, okay? If a rental asset, my parent property, again, the two stands for the, all right, and the residential rental, yes, I'm gonna check that. And then this is where I put in the cost basis. So I bought it for 135,000. I have 10% or land value of 13,500. Because it's a duplex, I'm putting in 50%. And you can see that's where my basis then becomes half. Everybody see where that's calculated at? My placed in service date, was that the date I bought it? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't rent it out for those first couple of years? We're making the assumption that you rented it right away, that it was ready to move it. If it was the case that you bought it and you're fixing up the other half, then I'd say yes, we have to, you know, wait until you actively participate. And so it would just kind of be, because it would be an income. So it really wouldn't be kind of a wash, if you will. Okay. So we have that. Um, prior depreciation, as I said, you kind of have to go back and do some calculations. And when I get a little bit more in depth with depreciation, we do Schedule C's, I'll talk about getting that, okay? So we're just gonna leave it red for now, all right? What's the 
thing you also have. Which one? Um, cost basis. No. One hundred thirty-five thousand. That's what I paid for the rent. I paid for the building. Oh, okay. I thought thirteen five it was for the Yep, that's right here. Salvage your land value, thirteen thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. And then after I subtract that, that's where it's divided by two to get my basis. Okay. All right. And then as it's as we see on there, she had receipts for everything, so we had expenses. Repairs to the roof. Well, the roof would have been over everything. So I'm back on my Schedule E. I have $89 for repairs. Advertising, well, that's obviously to rent, so I can take all that to $75. Legal fees, it's in parentheses for rental, so that's the $75. Now, user fees, garbage fees for the entire property. Well, that means for my half too. So what I did is on the utilities line, on line 17, I created a little scratch pad. And that scratch pad has user fees for garbage, half of it, water, half of it, because my water was 750, because I can only write what is for the rental property, okay? Now, the next thing I have is that she bought a new stove for the tenants. Well, something like that that has more than a year's useful life, we're going to depreciate. What I did was I went to the rental that I already had in there for the duplex, and the little white tab up at the top, I just hit copy asset worksheet, created a new one for me, and I called it stove. Pretty original, okay? My asset type, well, on my menu, there's one that's called Appliances Rental. I have the date that I placed it in service, the parent property, okay? It's not real estate, so we don't have to worry about that question, but I can put the $800 in there as my cost basis, and every little bit counts, okay? So I have $800. I get to take and break that over five years. All right. So I have $272. And I have next year I'll get to take $163. Okay. And the last one I have is she, rent or, uh, she remodeled the bathroom. So again, my little white tabs right up here at the top. Copy, copy asset worksheet. Bathroom remodel. It was a leasehold improvement for a residential property. I did it on August 16th is when it was finished. It was for that property and it is real estate. Okay, my cost basis. Pretty darn nice bathroom for 86.78, okay? Now, do I take half of it? No, why? It's all for the tenant. All for the tenant, so it goes 100%, and I get to take it over the lifetime of the rental, okay? And the fact that I did this year, I have no prior, but you can see my current depreciation in the next year, so I get the $118, okay? So that's where everything comes in to the Schedule E. All right. See why we wait to teach Schedule E's and Schedule C's later on? All right. Is it best to have five years of tax returns in your hand when you're doing this? Well, the thing about it is, you know, prior depreciation with it, a lot of times if it's a new client and the, if the previous accountant has the depreciation, you'd be able to put it in there. You know, obviously take prior plus that current year from the return and then put it in there. But like I said, when I teach you depreciation, I'll show you how to calculate all that. Okay. All right. How'd everybody do on that one? Is everybody's head kind of spinning? 